So after the previous video, when I was looking at the metric tensor uh, primarily in orthonormal bases, I thought it might be illuminating to look at an example of a metric tensor in non-orthonormal bases. And so here I have in black the orthonormal basis, and then in red the uh, tilde ones. I have uh, a non-orthonormal basis, and then this vector v here, which uh, over here I have it in terms of the orthonormal basis and right here in terms of the non-orthonormal basis. And so of course we can put our E tildes in terms of the orthonormal basis. So E tilde 1, which is this red one down here, uh, is one third, one third of this E1 and one fourth of this E2. Uh, and then our E2 tilde is three-fourths of our E1 and three-fourths of our E2. And so from this, we want to generate a metric tensor uh, for these new bases. And so I actually do the calculations for that over here. Uh, and so remember, our metric tensor, if we for two dimensions is going to look like this. So uh, E1 dot E1, E2, uh, or E1 rather, E1 dot E2, E2 dot E1, and then E2 dot E2. And so we're doing this with our, our uh, tilde bases. And so the first one is this E1 dot E1, which is the upper left-hand corner. And so we just take the two uh, in terms of the old basis and just uh, do FOIL with it. Uh, and so we end up with 1, 9, E1, E1 minus 2, 12, E1, E2. And so that minus is uh, because this one goes into the minus E2 right here. And so that's why there's that minus sign there. Uh, and then plus 1 eighth e2, e2. And in the orthonormal basis, this e1, e2 just goes to zero, so that goes to zero, so we end up with 1 ninth plus 1 eighth, which is approximately equal to 0.236. And then we look at the e1 tilde dot e2 tilde, which is not orthonormal, so this will not be zero. And so we take our E1 tilde in terms of the E of the E1, E2, then our E2 tilde in terms of the E1, E2, and then just foil those out. So we get 1 fourth E1, E1 th uh, plus 3 twelfths E1, E2, minus 3 sixteenths E2, E1, minus 3 sixteenths E2, E2. Well, the E1, E2 in the orthonormal basis are still zero. So these two go to zero. And so we just have one fourth minus three sixteenths, which gives us 0 0.0625. And then we do the same thing for our E2 tilde dot E2 tilde. We just uh, foil out uh, here with it in terms of the orthonormal basis. So we get 9 sixteenths E1, E1 plus 9 eighths E1, E2 plus 9 sixteenths E2, E2. This goes to zero because the E1, E2 in orthonormal uh, will be uh, zero when you do uh, E1 and E2. So you get 9 sixteenths plus 9 sixteenths, which is equal to 1.125. And so then we can put each of those into our metric tensor. So we have our 0.236, our 0 0.0625, 0 0.0625, both in the off diagonal and then the 1.125 uh, down here. So now if we want to take a dot product using these uh, tilde bases with the the components of 1.5 and 1.9. Uh, so we will do the dot product. So this is that uh, vector as a as a row vector, and this is it as a column vector. And so we're doing the dot product, and uh, then sandwiched in here in the middle is our metric tensor for this basis. Uh, and so 
I first uh, multiply through with uh, with the column vector and so we end up with this so this is just going step by step so it's just the uh, just the point two three six times the one point five so uh, left top and then we do the uh, right bottom uh, which is this right here and then we do the bottom left top which is this down here and the bottom uh, right bottom which is this down here and so we just multiply those then add them together and we end up with this column vector and we still have to multiply by this row vector and so we multiply the the left by the top and the right by the bottom and add them together. So the left by the top is this 0.705. The right in the bottom is this 4.237, which gives us 4.92. And so then when we take the square root of that, we get 2.22. So that is the length of this, uh, this vector V here, uh, this blue vector V. And that is the length we got taking the dot product, um, which is uh, which is of course this right here, which is why we're taking the square root over here to get the length of that v. And so this is what I got when I calculated using this metric tensor. So if we did it in orthonormal, uh, what we actually end up getting is this. Uh, but of course I was uh, just looking at my my graph here so I was just measuring things essentially by eye just sort of dead reckoning and that's why uh, it's not exactly the same but uh, if, if this was uh, you know measured you know more precisely uh, we would end up getting the exact same thing that we would have in our orthonormal basis and so what that tells us is that is that when we have our our metric that's 0 0.236, 0 0.0625, 0 0.0625, and 1.125. So this metric uh, and the metric in orthonormal like this uh, are the same. They have different components in them, but they're the same because we will get the same dot product. They're just so... Uh, so the way to think about it, I guess, is this one uh, up here is for the same space, but using the non-orthonormal basis. And so uh, depending on what the basis is, you're going to get different, uh, different elements in your, uh, in your metric tensor. But uh, using the non-orthonormal basis that I used up here, uh, we end up with this. And so... As I said in the last video, the metric tensor gives some meaning to a length uh, in our vector space. And so what we found is that whether we use these black bases or these right bases, this V here, this vector, this blue vector ends up being the same length. So, uh, so that's telling us that the, the vector is invariant. So the components of our vector so this 1.5 or 1.9 compared to this 2 or this 1, the components are different, but the vector itself, so this blue vector here is the same regardless of what basis we use. And the length of that vector is given by the, uh, by the metric. And so we can have these, met, these metrics with different elements in them, but it is still giving us the same space they're just used each used for different bases and so that is uh, that is a look at the uh, at the metric tensor in a non orthonormal basis and so uh, I hope you found this video helpful in your quest to understand tensors and I will see you in the next video